So I've talked a lot about uh, databases in general and referential integrity and uh, who cares? So what I'm gonna to talk to you about now is a note-taking app. And we're gonna see two implementations of this note-taking app, one with a local SQLite database and one with a uh, Firestore, Firestore. Yes, Firestore database, not the Firebase database. Firebase real-time database is the old bad one. It's actually worth remembering just because you don't wanna click on the wrong tab, but the Firestore database. So uh, our application is gonna have notes. A note is a piece of text and a bunch, one or more images. Actually, sorry, zero or more images. And so that's what a note is. So we have a string, this piece of text, and then we have a list of, of uh, image files um, that is a list of strings. And sort of what this string refers to is going to be different in the SQLite case as in, in the Firestore case. Uh, the the uh, image file list identifies a bunch of images. In the SQLite case, that's going to be a local file. In the Firebase case, that's a cloud file. A local file is identified by a local file name, you know, Android, blah, blah, blah. A cloud file is, is identified by a URL. So both of them have, you know, um, path name, components, uh, but they have sort of a different, a little bit of a different meaning. So one is a, a local file, one is a cloud file. Okay, but the in, in both cases, there's a dependence between the note object, which has this list of files, and the actual file objects, which are either on disk or in my cloud database. So whenever we have a situation where we have a data dependence, where we have an object and a pointer to that object, we need to maintain referential integrity. We do not want a note that refers to a non-existent image because that is going to make our app look bad uh, because it's going to get an error. Or it's not going to display a piece of data that the, that the user expects it to display. So let's uh, think through conceptually what this requires. So how do we create or edit a note in the SQLite case? Well, our in-memory note has a list of images. That's gonna be the new list. The note in the database also has a list of image files. That's gonna be our old list. When we want to modify the image table, we actually have to have a little bit of a fancy, I mean, passes for a fancy algorithm for, for systems work. I mean, it's, it's, it's not fancy, but you actually have to just think it through given the way tables are structured. So what we wanna do is we wanna go through and say, hey, if I have an image that is in the old list, it was there previously, and it's in the new list. So recall that the new list, you could delete, the user might delete an image, the user might add an image. The user might do both. The user might edit a note, delete some images, take some more pictures and add some images. So I've got a new list, I've got an old list. If you've got a member that's in both the old list and the new list, fine. Just leave it in the table. It's still correct. Everything is copacetic. We don't want to delete it and then put it back. There's no sense. So we look for these items that are the same. We leave them. If the item is in the old list and it's not in the new list, oh my gosh, that means I had a file name that used to be referred to by this note. It is no longer referred to by this note. What does that mean? That means the user deleted that file. In that case, when the user deleted it, it disappeared from their view. But now 
I am actually going to go and delete that file. So we're storing this note into the database. And as we store the note into the database, we want to make sure that uh, our file storage doesn't grow without bounds. In this case, it's, it's actually, if we failed to delete the file, we would not violate referential integrity because uh, there would be a file that doesn't have a pointer to it. And so that would be uh, a resource we would need to garbage collect at some point. At some point, we might scan through all of the files and say, hey, are there pointers to all these files? If so, that's great. If there's no pointers to this file, let's delete it. But we want to do this work as we go. And so when we store back this note, if there is a, a path name in there that's not in the new list, we will delete the file. And if there's a path name in the new list and it's not in the old list, well, we have to put that, we have to add a row to the database for that file. So we're going to see this in the code, but conceptually, uh, you know, this is the, the task. And if you sort of think it through, I think this is, this is fairly logical. When you actually look at the code, yeah, it's a little bit more complicated. It's, you know, uh, programming languages don't understand things as easily as humans do. So that's uh, in the SQLite case. What about in the Firestore case? Well, um, let, me, let me describe a very simple algorithm that no sophisticated programmer worth their salt. Oh, I had, I had some animation on this, but not on this slide. No, no programmer worth their salt would actually implement this algorithm, uh, unless you're me, in which case I totally implemented this algorithm and got it wrong first time. So uh, how do we create a note? Well, let's just do the simple thing. We're going to see the APIs for uh, interacting with Firestore, but they're not, they're not very surprising. You know, if I want to store a file to my cloud database, I have a, a, a routine that I call that says, hey, upload this file. And the, the routine looks very simple, right? It's like you upload this file, and then there are callbacks for when the upload is successful. But you know, those callbacks, um, you can not wait for them and you can just start your upload. So whenever some, whenever a user uh, creates an image file, you start an upload. And then, hey, when they're done writing their note, you just write the note. Well, what's the problem with this? The problem is that um, I might have started the upload, but the upload might not have completed. So my note, is going to have uh, a list of, of names uh, corresponding to the cloud files. This is my impression of a randomly generated file name. We're actually going to see some randomly generated file names. They look a little bit like this. So my note refers to this randomly generated file name. However, in the cloud database, this file name does not exist. Why? Because I've started the upload. It will exist shortly but it doesn't exist now. So I've uploaded the image and then I store the note. The note sort of races ahead because the note is small. It's just some text. The image is like a couple of megabytes. So that's taking a while. I write the note and then I have violated referential integrity. Dun, dun, dun. The, the thing we were all worried about has come true. Now, why is that? Why is violating referential integrity a problem? Because uh, this upload has started. It's going on in, on one thread. On another thread, I write this note. And then when I write that note, um, I've got live data that updates. That live data fetches the note, says, hey, there's a great picture waiting for me in the, the cloud database. Ah, uh, you told me to read this file. This file doesn't exist. I'm upset. I've crashed. You know, I might you know, the, uh, I'm displaying the wrong output to the user. This is an, an unsatisfying situation. So we don't want this to happen. And the, the answer is uh, conceptually simple. We, when we take a picture, we, and, and we've successfully taken the picture to the local file system, we then start uploading that file. We do not uh, display anything to the user at this point. So the user sees the old world. 
And if at this point they crash, it's, it's okay. They might lose the picture that they just took. But that sort of matches the mental model of what's going on in a user's mind. They took this picture, something bad happened. And their first question is like, hey, I wonder if my picture made it in. They never saw the app display the picture in, in the app. And so because of that, there's no sort of notion that, 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 that this sort of made it through. And so that, that's what we are, uh, you know, th that's what we are capitalizing on. We are introducing potentially a user visible delay, but we're doing it in order to get referential integrity. And this is, you know, this is why like I make such a big deal out of it because we are actually sort of making a user facing change that's a little bit unsatisfying, but it's to get this very, very important property, which is, you know, you never go backwards in time. Once the user sees a, a result in your app, that result doesn't go away. So only when that file is successfully uploaded, we delete the local file, we update the note, we update the note. So, I, so the note doesn't change until the file is successfully uploaded. We've gotten the callback. Then we write the note to the server because then we're guaranteed that we've written the data if we write the pointer to the data, the, it, the pointer will uh, refer to something that exists. So we're maintaining referential integrity by writing the data before writing a pointer to it. What is the cost of all this? The cost is there's a delay between when the user takes their picture, says that looks good, and that picture shows up in our app. Once it shows up in our app, we're sort of committed to have, you know, we sort of, we're telling the user that, hey, our app will remember your photo. And we only want to do that once the app has been uploaded to the server. Now, this uh, assumes that your app has a good internet connection. This, this algorithm sort of does not support disconnected operation. One thing you could do, you can imagine doing is saying, hey, as soon as we write this picture to the local file system, then we'll display it to the user and we'll make sure that if the you know internet connection goes down we'll remember to retry to upload this photo that's the kind of thing you might do in real life we're not going to do that in this course that's just it's just too complicated but it's 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 a good thing to think about those those kinds of features are difficult to support disconnected operation is difficult to support and this is what makes it difficult to support because we are balancing what the user sees in the app versus what's stored locally versus what's stored in the cloud database. And this becomes important precisely when the application crashes unexpectedly, the internet goes out unexpectedly, and it gives you a sense of why it's, um, you know, it's, it's easy or the, the first 80% of writing an app is easy, but that last 20%, if you really want these sort of nice features and look, there are apps out there in the app store that get some of the stuff wrong, even major apps. I mean, sometimes, you know, I, I update the, the New York times and like they have clearly introduced a bug, you know, it's not necessarily a referential integrity bug, but it's something along those lines that relates to, you know, I quit the app in some weird state and now it's in uh, you know, in, in an unpleasant way and, you know, it, it can't sort of write itself. So there was one app I had to, you know, sometimes you even have to um, uninstall and reinstall it. And why would you have to do that? Because maybe it's got some, you know, old files sitting around and it's getting confused about uh, its current state of its communication with its underlying database. So anyway, those are, uh, I, I think that's, sort of one of the most conceptually interesting lessons from the, the code that we're going to go through. Um, and it's, it's kind of nice to be able to see the same app that has basically the same functionality implemented for both SQLite and for uh, uh, the Firebase, because you get to see the, the same issues in play in two different contexts and how we solve those problems in, in two different ways.